So we are ready now to install the virtual pfSense and we want it to be this subnet address, the dot three, right? So all these VMs are gonna get fixed by, I, by my MAC address and it's one IP. So we, we you'll see that when you create the virtual machine, actually, let me actually show you that uh, in here, for example, this one that we have uh, already configured. When you go, and I'm using vCenter, but this is a similar thing on on EXXI. When you go onto the network adapter, you can specify the the uh, MAC address in here. So basically, what I want is that this MAC address should always get a specific uh, IPv4 address from the virtual PFSense router, and, and and so the other VMs. That's part of the requirement for OpenShift, uh, the OpenShift environment I'm setting up here. So I already did this procedure and it works. So I'm gonna, I, I already shut down my PFSense Cloud Pack for Security one, and I'm gonna create a new one. So you go on there here, create and register a virtual machine. And I'm gonna go quickly because this first part, first part is not important. I'm gonna give it a name, PF Sense. Oops, meant to be typing here. PF Sense uh, demo. I'm gonna call it. I put here other in order to access here free BSB64. And by the way, I already uploaded the ISO image that I downloaded for uh, PFSense and put it in my storage. So when you go here into storage, I cannot go now because I have this uh, option selected. When you go into storage, you're going to find an up upload link and you can upload your ISO image there. And we're going to use it in a minute. So I click here next. I, I'm going to put it on that hard drive that I have space for. And um, here is an important thing. In the first adapter, this is going to be my one adapter. So therefore, as we said before in the graph, we want to have that connected to my one, and that's the VM network. Okay, and that's the port group that is assigned to the virtual switch that is assigned to the NIC. Uh, now we need to add one more network adapter for the LAN part, right? And this one it, it automatically took the other port group, which is the LAN dash CP4S. And that's all we need to do. And in the for the installation DVD, say, well, I have an ISO that I uploaded, as I said before, there. And that's where I can select it here. And I click uh, Next. And I can finish here. And all I need to do is select it in here and power it on. I, I was investigating and the default setting for the network adapter, there are more modern adapter called VMXX3 or something. I didn't, because this machine is not going to be doing anything performance related, but I guess that it will work if you put the more modern uh, network adapter. What these things boots up, I'm going to take all the defaults. Click OK, select, OK. Uh, you can actually see that uh, the type of adapter that I have well, actually it doesn't show it here, but it's a E1000. But again, I took all the defaults and this stuff work like a charm. Now, the installation finish. I click here, no, I don't want to do anything with that. Reboot, pausing the video until it comes fully up. So the installation fin the the, the Reboot finish and notice that it's welcoming me, welcoming me by saying EM0 is the one and has that physical address. I cannot hit that address from outside the VM EXSI environment. If I open a browser with that address, it will never work. Uh, so I cannot configure PFSense from a browser unless I'm inside one of the VMs. And, and also it's telling me that the LAN that we have has the 192.168.1.1. That's not what we want. What we actually want is uh, 
the dot three network. That's what it was going to be. All these VNs will be 192.168.3 dot something. And again, that something is going to be determined by the MAC address that it has. More on that later. So what I need to do is go into option number two to set interfaces IP addresses. It says, which is the one that you want to configure? Notice that the number one has DHCP and DHCP6. We are not really doing anything with uh, DHCP6, so I can actually go here and I say, you want that to be DHCP? And I say, yes, because it's getting that IP address from my physical router. Do you want the one interface by DHCP? six which I'm not using in this particular case I say no say so you want to put one manually I say no by hitting enter do you want to revert this is important in case that you are using for example Chrome Chrome will not let you get with standard HTTP so you can revert to HTTPS but I'm accessing from Firefox which can do that so I'm gonna hit uh, no there and I haven't done much this uh, go around uh, but I'm going to go the second time, and this is the important and the tricky one. So I'm selecting the LAN because I want to make it the dot three network. The new LAN IP before address, so I'm going to put 192.168.3.1. I believe I can put zero because it's specifying the, the range in here. But uh, I'm putting that, and it says, what's the range? I want the entire subnet that's three subnet so I put 24 now he's asking me for a gateway uh, I'm not going to specify that because my physical router which is actually a physical PSN but that's irrelevant uh, is going to take care of that so I'm going to hit enter for none since I'm not doing anything with IPv6 in this particular case I'm going to hit here enter here enter no say so do you want to enable DHCP server on the LAN of course I do I want that to be done so I selected here yes enter the start uh, of, of that particular range and this can be confusing but let me actually type it here 192.168.3.2 because dot one is the actual interface to the PF sense box so starting the start point is 2 no, no, nothing particularly here, but what I'm doing on the end of this range is I'm limiting, limiting it to uh, 199. Why? Because I want the entire 200 range to be assigned by DHCP uh, from, from my PSN's virtual router. And more on that later, but this can be confusing. But trust me, uh, it works uh, like that. So by, by saying this, I'm saying uh, don't use anything about 199 because we are going to be assigning those by, uh, by IP address. Do you know, want to revert to the HTTP protocol? No, I, I will keep on using Firefox. Uh, so I'm here. Don't. When I hit enter, notice that I'm now welcome with that IP address. Now I can open... Uh, from a machine that is connected to that switch on the LAN in here and the, the install node we have it connected to LAN CP4S we should be able to launch Firefox and get uh, get access to a browser to configure it so and here on my VMs uh, we can even close this because we're going to do the rest of the configuration by the GUI. So here's my install node. And as you can see, it's connected to the LAN dash CP for this uh, port group. Uh, so that is actually good. So it should receive uh, a DHCP address that is from 2 to 199 because that's a standard DHCP that is not uh, done by. Uh, by uh, physical MAC address and that's what I actually want to do so I'm here so let me log in well, I 
made a mistake on the password. So let's open a command line and see what we got. So if I do if config ENS192, which is the only interface that I have on this, uh, on this machine, notice that it gave me the next available DHCP address, which is 2. That's what the, the DHCP server, so it's working the DHCP server. But what we want is to have it that this particular MAC address that I define for install node, in fact, let me actually show you that I did that. When, when you do edit settings, you can actually put this manual. When you put manual, you can specify the address. One very important thing, that, that really took me a while to figure out and wasted many hours. All the MAC addresses for this VMware EXSIs have to begin with 005056. If you put any other MAC address, none of this works. So this is the kind of the assigned IP uh, MAC address range for for VM, uh, for EXXI. So all you'll see that all my MAC addresses in all my machine have those three prefixes, and then you can have whatever you want there. So because now again I, I, I got the first IP address because I haven't told PFSense to do anything particular with it. That's good. Let's actually change that by going here and firing Firefox. And I can go into my interface by 192.168.3.1 and this is Firefox because I, I have a self-signed certificate. Click here Advance, scroll down, accept the risk. Again, if I were using Chrome, which is not by default in, in, in Red Hat anyway, uh, and you have probably a certificate, that's the question that you want to revert to HTTP that we saw before. So the default is uh, for, for logging in PFSense is admin and then the word is pfsense or lowercase and you see that why they keep asking browser still has to save the password that's unsafe so um, i'm in there and notice that it's telling me in here change that sometimes you may get the options for pfsense in here sometimes you need to click on this hamburger and get it from it so what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the dhcp server in here right and notice that it's enabled and we saw it working and we're going to tell it notice that 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 range that we specify manually remember that when we did it uh, is there and now we're going to tell it well you know what i want you to assign an ip address manually and i click here add and i'm going to put the mac address and here's where i will show you that copy paste is uh, actually working so I have that in my clipboard and if I do right click paste bang uh, control F also works but anyway let me make sure I know what I'm doing here you see I do not know what I'm doing here I'm gonna actually close these well I don't need to even close it but the problem is that remember that in the second video where I talk about copy paste in order for this to work, you can actually close it from here, you need to go to vCenter and for install node you need to launch it in remote console as I show all the steps in the air, right? So I'm here on vCenter and now if I right click here well, in that field sometimes in I don't know why but I need to click kind of a, a little above the field to actually be able to select it if I click here paste bingo that's what I wanted eh, to avoid mistakes so I'm saying the the physical address of my install node which is the one now is going to get another folks both a host name and when I'm giving it the host name I'm going to call it install node I want this all lowercase. I prefer to have host names in lowercase. Uh, not that that matters, but install node. Oh, come on. And again, it is that thing that I need to click slightly above on the option I want to select. And here on the IP address, if I click slightly above, 
I want that to be 192.168.3.2 dot 214 okay that's what I want and the host name and this is, is going to give the machine the host name install dash node and by doing this if I did all right I click here save and then PFSEN say well you need to apply the changes which I do and I'm going to reboot this box and we should see that this box is going to have the 214 address instead of the .2 address that it got uh, before. So let me turn it off. Uh, I can actually do that also from, from the EXSI or BSphere console, powering it off. And I'm going to power it on again and we'll see if the DHCP is being assigned according to the MAC address. Powering on. Sometimes you need to click on this refresh button to, to get the, the status to, to show. I can launch, I don't need copy paste, so I can launch this uh, web console. Let me pause the video until the OS comes fully up. Long at all. And when we open a terminal and do if config ENS192, let's see what we get. If you type it wrong, it will never work. If config, I can actually do upper arrow, I think, yeah, I had it there. Oh, it beautifully, it works. So notice that it has the 192.168.3 instead of the 2 that we had before we had the 2.14 because we told we just told PFSEN right, anything that comes with that MAC address bang give it that that IP and actually I haven't tested this but the host name should also be set up automatically yeah install the node so this works uh, again I'm not stopping this video here, it's already getting way too long, but this shows you, and I hope that this saves you a tremendous amount of time. It took me certainly uh, several hours of uh, trial and error with emphasis on error uh, to get to this point.